Welcome to day two guys. I have my camp set up from last night and if you guys watched the last video I put out you can see the sunset that I shot over this peak right here. So I wanted to make sure that I had a good central camp location where I had lots of views and I could watch sunrise which makes it really easy just to pop my head out of the tent in the morning see how the light looks and either go back to sleep or get up and shoot. And even though there's really nice clouds right now, when I woke up for sunrise this morning, it was completely clear. There was a little bit of light on the peaks, but wasn't really worth shooting. So today I'm going to be going through all of the different gear that I brought out on this backpacking trip. So I'll go through the backpacking gear and the photography gear, and then I'll break it down for the specific season I'm in, which is early fall. So it's starting to get, I don't know, around freezing at night and up in the 50s during the day. So one of my favorite times of year to backpack. So the first thing I'll go over is my tent setup. And I am currently using the Z-Pax duplex tent. It's a two-man tent, it has a ton of room in it, but it only weighs one pound or around 19 ounces. And why I really like this tent is because it's made out of this material called Dyneema. So this is completely waterproof material it dries almost instantly so if it's wet and you wipe it off it'll dry very quickly and it holds up to wind really well you can also see i don't have any poles with this tent except my actual trekking poles so that cuts down on the actual weight that i have to carry so one of the things that i'm really looking for in a tent as a full-time wilderness photographer is somewhere that not only protects me from weather and storms but somewhere i can hang out in comfortably if there is really bad weather for a few days and I just have to sit out in the tent and wait for the weather to change for the good light in the photo. So what I like about this tent is it has a whole lot of room inside and it's very sturdy. So it has stakes around eight places around the outside and I don't have it staked in very well right now, but if there's a storm, I would pound them all the way in and put rocks on them. So this is my favorite tent of all time. It is a little bit of expensive, but it's very simple and it's got a whole lot of room in it. So you can see if I come inside it, what's really nice is I can completely sit up and I'm 6'2 and I still have a lot of headroom. And the other nice part about it is you can actually change the height of your trekking poles and pitch the tent lower or higher up. The other thing I really like is this bathtub floor. You can see this is also Dyneema, meaning completely waterproof material. So if you get water underneath the tent it doesn't seep in and if it gets wet on the outside of the tent you just dry it off so let's go over there now and i'm going to go through the rest of my backpacking equipment that i bring out with me on these trips and if you guys like this kind of stuff and you want me to do more of it just let me know in the comments and i can do even more in-depth stuff on the specifics of the gear i also left a pdf below this video you can just sign up for my email list and it'll give you a full pdf of all my gear all my packing checklists and everything else like that for you guys to check out so first thing we're going to start with is the bottom layers and then we're going to work up to the top layers and then we're going to go through the actual backpacking equipment that i take out so layering can be the hardest part about learning backpacking and wilderness travel and that is just what you're actually wearing on the trail and what you're actually wearing at camp because if you don't bring enough layer then you're gonna be cold all the time and you can be in dangerous situations. If you bring way too many layers, then it's way too heavy and your pack's way too big. So learning this and optimizing it takes trips out in the wild and it also takes learning a specific technique that will really help you out. So the first thing I'm gonna break down is what I actually wear on the trail and then we'll go into what I wear at camp. So first thing, we'll go from the bottom and work our way up. I really like trail runners to wear on the trail. They're a lot more comfortable you can do a lot more miles in them. They're a lot lighter. And the best part is if they get wet, unlike a boot, they dry out very quickly. If you guys have ever worn wet boots, they're extremely heavy. And then you have to lift each foot each time you're climbing and it's really gonna put a strain on your legs. So I like ultra trail runners. These are the Temp 4.5s, or these are the Lone Peak 4.5s. I also like the Temp 4.5s. For socks, I like darn tough socks because they have a lifetime warranty. Once I put holes in them, I send them back and they send me a new pair for free, which is great. And all this stuff I've tested at least 300 nights out on the trail backpacking. So I've really put it through the ringer. I'm not going to tell you anything that I just started using without letting you know first. These pants are these Prana Stretch Zion pants. 
they're fantastic. They're a little bit stretchy. They're really tough and they're great climbing pants. They're great backpacking pants. Next thing I have is an Eddie Bauer shirt. This is just a random cheap shirt that I picked up at Eddie Bauer because I had a gift card, but it ended up being a really tough and nice backpacking shirt. What I like about the button up shirts is when it gets hot during the day, you can button them down or up and then you always have sun protection. You can also use this for sun protection if you're out in the desert. And you can leave the sleeves unbuttoned, then you get airflow and sun protection, or you can just roll them all the way up. So it's a very versatile shirt. It dries quickly and it's very nice to wear on the trail. The next thing I have is a hat. I always prefer to wear a trekking hat, and this has a little sunshade that actually clips on it, which I'll show you guys in a little bit. So having full range of sun protection when you're up in the mountains is essential because even if it's the middle of the winter, it's very easy to get sunburned. So next, let's start with the stuff that I layer up with while on the trail. So there's a few things to think about here. If you're out backpacking in the mountains, you're gonna have your basic trail gear. I just call this a trail uniform. I wear the same thing every single day on the trail. But when you stop or when the weather gets cold or you just wanna have a snack, you need to have some layers to put on because if your body heat starts to drop, then your body has to consume more calories to raise that body heat back up, and you're gonna eat a lot more calories and have to carry a lot more food. So keeping your body heat up where it should be the whole time is essential to burning calories in the correct way. So you're not having these big boosts of energy and these big lulls where you lose energy. So what I prefer to use is the Patagonia R1 hoodie. It zips down so you can wear it while you're hiking in the late fall or winter, or if you're just sitting down like I am now and it's cold out, you can put it on over you. So the temperatures right now are getting down to around 25 degrees at night. So having this with me is great for my trail layering system, but I can also wear it at camp. So one thing to keep in mind for anything that you're gonna take with you on the trail and wear it with you on the trail, if it's raining out and it gets wet, you have to ensure that the thing that gets wet isn't needed to keep you warm at night because wet stuff doesn't keep you warm very well. So just something to keep an eye out on. If you guys like this kind of technical video, I can do one specifically on layering. Just let me know in the comments, but this is just an overview. So I have that hoodie and then I have a very lightweight windbreaker jacket. I don't recommend using Gore-Tex jackets except in the winter where it's very cold and the wind is very high or there's freezing rain. The rest of the season, you don't really need a Gore-Tex jacket because if there's a ton of rain, Gore-Tex jacket's going to eventually wet through to the inside just as easily as this, but this will dry out a lot quicker and it's a lot lighter. So this is just a very light and simple windbreaker jacket. And I'll use that on the trail as well if I need to, if it's sprinkling or freezing rain or anything else like that, I can wear that if my body temperature is starting to drop. So these are things that I also wear at camp if I need to, but just keep in mind if they get wet on the trail, they're not gonna be able to keep you warm at camp. So those are my two trail layers and I'll combine them with this stuff at camp. So let's start at the bottom of the layering system for camp and just work our way up. So for this time of year, I'm just bringing a pair of Merino wool socks that I'm going to wear at camp at night. I don't bring any extra shoes. What I use for shoes at night are bread bags. So your feet get wet during the day when you're hiking on the trail. When you get to camp, you wanna put a dry pair of socks on. So I just put this pair of wool socks on. And then over your dry, clean wool socks, you can just put a bread bag. These are just Dave's Killer bread bag. And then you can just put your shoe back on over the bread bag. So you have a nice dry, warm foot with the wool socks. And this will also help to dry your shoes in the evening so they won't be as wet in the morning or they won't freeze overnight if it gets really cold. So I really like to use bread bags instead of having to bring an extra pair of sandals or Crocs or anything else to camp. It saves about a half a pound of weight and it makes life way more simple. So. You don't need a bunch of extra shoes or sandals for camp. Just wear one pair of shoes on the trail, have a nice pair of warm socks and bread bag. So that's where I wear camp on the bottom. And then a pair of long underwear. These are REI brand long underwear. 
You can also get the Patagonia Capeline long underwear. I have those and I like those as well. I'll leave links for all this stuff for you guys so you can check it out. Next thing I have is down pants. So instead of bringing two pairs of long underwear, down pants are much warmer and lighter. These are Western Mountaineering down pants and they are fantastic. I bring these anytime that it's not the middle of the summer because up in the mountains, even once it gets into September, it's gonna be dropping into freezing at night. And these are awesome to have to wear around camp. And if it gets really cold at night, you can wear them inside your sleeping bag too. I think these are around eight ounces and they're just fantastic. I've been using these for about five years now. Super light. I would just watch out that you don't get down pants that are too heavy. These Western Mountaineering flash pants are the lightest down pants that I've found. Any heavy down pants just add too much weight to your pack and they end up being way too warm unless you're up in Alaska or something like that. Down pants are great. So the next thing we're gonna do is the tops. So just a regular regular Patagonia Capeline shirt, just a thermal shirt. If it gets colder than say 20 degrees, I'll bring two of these thermal shirts and layer up. But for this type of weather where it's in the mid 20s, low 30s at night, this is just fine. Now over top of this at camp, I will wear this R1 hoodie. And then over top of the R1 hoodie, I'm gonna wear one of my down jackets. Now, I normally just bring one down jacket with me this time of year, but I just got this new Mountain Hardware down jacket. It's called the Ghost Whisperer. It's eight pounds, and I wanted to test it on how cold of conditions I could wear it in. So I brought it along with my normal down jacket, which is the Feathered Friends EOS. So the Feathered Friends EOS is a much heavier down jacket. I wear this in the middle of the winter but this is more like a fall and summer down jacket. It's about half the weight at eight ounces. So I actually found that last night in 28 degree temperatures, wearing this with this layering under it and the windbreaker over top of it was perfect. So I didn't want to test that out without having, without having a backup warmer down jacket just in case. So I, if you want to get a down jacket that just does it all, the Feathered Friends EOS is fantastic. They're out of Seattle, Washington. All this down stuff is top of the line down stuff, but I would recommend getting really good down equipment if you're going to, because it's gonna last you a really long time and it's gonna be really warm if you get the good stuff. So this is what I would wear on top of that. And then to protect your down in weather conditions, you always just wanna put your windbreaker on top of your down if you need to break the wind, or if you're a little bit cold still in your down, this will help to add an extra layer of protection around the down and make a thermal layering around your whole body. So that's good. But I would highly recommend the EOS by Feathered Friends. I have not tested this Ghost Whisper. My buddy Iron Taz, you can check out his website. It's just irontaz.com. He loves this Ghost Whisper. So that's why I wanted to check it out. It saves eight ounces off of the Feathered Friends EOS, which can be great for cutting weight in summer or fall environments. So that's all I have for the layering on the trail and at camp. So the next things I have are sleeping pad. I use the Thermarest sleeping pads. I really like them a lot. Blow up sleeping pads are a lot lighter. They're a lot warmer. The only downside they have is you can get punctures in them. So I would just recommend taking their patch kit, but also carrying Tyvek tape, T-Y-V-E-K. Now, usually a catastrophic failure won't happen like this, but I've had this pad for about five years and the bottom was starting to wear thin and I think something hit it or cut it, I don't know, but it sliced across the whole thing. And if you use the standard patch kit, it's not gonna fix this. So Tyvek tape is what I use to patch my pack rafts in emergency scenario. This stuff is unbelievable. So just clean it with alcohol swab, patch it with Tyvek and it's probably stronger than the original. So this is the Thermarest Neo Air X Lite which is a very light sleeping pad. This is the regular size. I use the X-Therm by the same company, Thermarest, for the winter. It's a lot warmer, it's got a lot more insulation in it. But most of the year, I'm just using this unless I'm camping on the snow. Next thing I have is sleeping bag. I just use a 20 degree Fahrenheit sleeping bag for all seasons. So if it's summer, I just open up the sleeping bag and use it like a blanket on top of me if I need to. If it's any of the other three seasons, I just close it up. Now, what's nice about a 20 degree bag 
is it's not as heavy as like a zero degree or 10 degree bag, but I can also wear all my down layers inside this bag in the winter, which is really nice because then I don't have to carry this extra bag that I'm just lugging around for bag weight. And then around camp, I can wear part of my layering system and then stay really warm as well in the bag. So it makes this bag with all these down layers that I wear probably a zero degree bag. So this is the Feathered Friends Hummingbird bag and it's the UL or ultralight. My buddy Iron, he likes the quilts. Uh, I have not tried the quilts yet. The quilts are a little bit lighter, they look great, but I already have a bag that I really like, so I have no reason to spend an extra $300 just to drop my pack weight like four ounces for the quilt. But Feathered Friends make awesome sleeping bags. I've used this for five years now in all different ranges of environments, down to zero degrees, all the way up to like the middle of summer and it works great if you have the right layering systems. So the next thing I have, as we can go over, is backpack. So this is the Hyperlight Mountain Gear Porter 5400 bag. It's a huge bag, but the nice part about this bag is I can use it for, I've had this out on 15 day expeditions where I also carried a pack craft with it and all my food. But if you need it for shorter trips, it's just like a stuff sack. It's very simple. I'll put out another video just on this bag, but it's just like a long stuff sack. And then you can just roll it up to whatever size you need. It's extremely light. I think this one's two and a half pounds. And if you're not doing really big expeditions, I would check out the other versions of this pack, such as the 4400 or the 3400. That's just the cubic centimeter volume of the pack. But I love this thing. It's simple and it's not going to add all these bells and whistles like you'll see with all the packs at REI or all the beginner packs. I would steer clear of those. They have all these straps you don't need. They have all this stuff they think you'll want and need, like all these extra features that end up just adding weight to your pack and getting in your way. So this is extremely minimalist, simple pack. It just has two straps. It doesn't have a bunch of stuff coming down off of it to add to the confusion of putting your pack on. It's the best pack and the most comfortable pack I've ever used. It's also made out of Dyneema, just like my tent, so it's waterproof and it's extremely lightweight and tear resistant. So, love that pack, it's fantastic. It's also got two really big hip belt pockets. One carries my GoPro, the other carries my phone, which I use for backcountry navigation, and some snacks while I'm out on the trail. So I wanted to give you guys a quick look at the fully packed backpack and why I like this Hyperlite setup so much. So you can see there's nothing strapped around the outside. A lot of backpacks will have all these pockets and straps and stuff hanging off. There's this mesh strap, which I use to carry water and some snacks and a sitting pad. Sitting pad can be great when it's cold out to keep your body heat in you instead of dissipating out through the ground. And then what I also like here is that the tripod straps on the outside, but I can also pack pack raft straps or anything else out there. And you'll notice on this pack, it doesn't have any of these straps that come down on the shoulder straps. It just has two standard shoulder straps and that's it. And a hip belt. So super light, super comfortable. And it also has straps on this side. The other thing I forgot to mention is trekking poles. I like to use the Black Diamond Alpine Carbon Cork. They're kind of expensive, but the nice thing about carbon is they're very light and they're very strong. So I can not only use them to set up my tent, but when you're moving in off trail terrain, like you can see all around me, having trekking poles is like having two extra pairs of legs to stabilize yourself. So it can take a lot of the stress out of your legs, move into your arms so you can do longer days. You can also move a lot more quickly through rugged terrain. So Hyperlite Mountain Gear, and that's the Porter 5400. I'll leave links to all this stuff so you guys can check it out. What else we got back here? This is just my food bag. And I carry one bag with my food for the trip. And then I carry another bag that just has my food for the day that I carry very close to the top of my pack so I can grab it very easily. And these are also made by Hyperlite Mountain Gear. There are little pods that open up. And then you can itemize anything you need inside there. And if you guys want me to do a video on food, like, you, like I said, let me know. I can do another video. These pods are also made out of Dyneema, so they're water resistant. And then I have my small essentials bag. This just has a bunch of 
random stuff that I need for the trip. And I can go through it real quick with you. Hat, bread bags, which we already went through, a towel. I would recommend just carrying a very small washcloth sized towel. You can use this to wash yourself off, but you can also use it to dry yourself off. So what I do is I soak this thing first and I'll wash all myself off and then I'll wring it out somewhere away from water and then I'll just dry myself off. And you'll be a little damp still after that, but just put your layers on and your body heat will warm you up. You don't need this big towel to carry around with you. Something like that works just fine. These are water containers. If I ever knew I love these containers, they're just little two liter water containers. And I carry four liters of water carrying capability with me up in the mountains. But generally I'm only carrying about 16 ounces of water at a time because water's heavy and I just know where water sources are. So I'll chug a bunch of water when I get to one and then I'll fill these up at night for camp so I don't have to go find water in the morning to make coffee and stuff like that. Toothbrush, little contained toothbrush. It's got the toothpaste right in it, made by Tube. Battery bricks by Anchor. I use these to charge my camera and I also use them to charge my GoPro. Pillow by Sea to Summit. This is just a little blow up pillow. Extremely light, two ounces. Game changer for getting good sleep. Headlamp by Black Diamond. Any headlamp works, this one's fine. Lightweight gloves for this time of year. Hiking map, topo map. Sunglasses. And then I have a few little essential items like hand solve. It gets really dry and your hands crack up in the mountains. So having some of this for your lips, your face and your hands can be really helpful. A pair of headphones. Earplugs, when it gets windy at night, it's really nice to have some earplugs. Spare pair of batteries. Floss. Compass. And you'll notice I don't have anything that I might need. It's only stuff that I'll definitely need or emergency scenario stuff. I also have this little clip-on shade that clips on this hat. Like this. And it'll cover the back of your neck and the side of your ears. It's great for rafting. It's great for being out in the mountains or anything else. So that's all the stuff in that bag. Garmin InReach Mini communication device. I can check the weather on this. I can send people text messages if I need to. If I want to meet them in the back country, I can send them where I am. And I can send out signals every night that tells a little list of people that I'm okay and safe. So that's nice to have. First aid emergency kit. Does not work unless you know how to use it and you're extremely well trained in it because when actual emergencies happen, you're not going to suddenly learn how to take care of somebody in an emergency situation. I recommend taking a 10 day wilderness first responder class and become a certified wilderness first responder if you're gonna spend a lot of time out here. Then you'll actually know how to use this stuff and you'll be able to fit out your kit with what you actually need. I don't recommend buying the standard pre-made first aid kits. They're usually heavy on stuff like band-aids and things that you could do without without having things that you might actually need to save somebody's life out in the backcountry. So at least take an emergency three-day course, but the Wilderness First Responder is fantastic to have. Bathroom bag, toilet paper, hand sanitizer, and a way to carry out and keep separate any dirty toilet paper. Don't bury your toilet paper out in the wilderness. Pack it back with you, take it home, throw it out and compost it. Trash compactor bag. This is not a, just a standard trash bag. It's a thick trash compactor bag. If the weather's gonna be bad, this is a great way to line the inside of your backpack. Don't use one of those things that stretches over the outside of your backpack. It just gets wet and it doesn't work. Keep the inside of your pack dry. Use this, put it inside your pack and then pack all your gear inside that. Fantastic thing to protect your gear, keep you warm. Jet boil. They don't make this size anymore. If it's starting to get cold or I'm gonna be on a shorter trip, say three or four days, I'll carry a jet boil because it weighs about a pound. It adds a little bit extra bulk to my pack, but it's really nice to have warm food at night. If I'm doing a really long trip, say 10 or 15 days, I'll use a method called cold soaking where I'll just soak my food during the day in a cup and then I'll eat it after it soaks. So nothing's as good as a hot meal, but sometimes you gotta cut the jet boil weight. So that's good to have. And then I also have these Hyperlite stuff sacks. These are what itemize all of this gear. These are also waterproof. They're very tough. And you can use all these to itemize the gear into your pack. 
So having multiple layers of protection to keep the gear that you need to stay safe and warm dry is essential. So trash compactor bag, but then also stuff sacks inside. And these are extremely light. They only weigh about an ounce. So what you're gonna notice if you're just getting into backpacking, there's a lot of stuff they're gonna tell you online that you need. They're gonna advertise like crazy to you. You need this little LED light for a camp. You need all this crazy stuff. It's gonna make your pack heavier and it's also gonna cost you a lot of money. So you're gonna have to work more. So you could instead spend the time out here backpacking if you have less stuff, if you have really good gear, and then you just use it for a long period of time. And then you keep your pack really light. You can do way longer days on the trail and you can have way more fun backpacking. Because the one thing I always see when people start out backpacking, they look miserable. And it's because they're carrying way too much gear and they don't need half the gear. So they're just confused trying to figure out what to do with it all. Now this looks like a lot of gear, but it packs down into my pack very quickly. So if you were to watch me pack this pack, which I'll put another video out on, it just all flows and goes in there real quick. Everything goes in a specific spot. So hopefully that helps you guys out. I also have my camera. I'll do another video on this camera stuff because this one's running long and I'm filming with the camera right now. But I'll do a video on my backcountry camera setup. And I think that's all my gear. Oh yeah, and a cell phone. I use a mobile phone running Gaia GPS. You can download all the maps offline and it makes it way easier to navigate and save good photo locations out here. And the nice part about this is you always have your backup hard copy map, but this makes it much easier to move quickly during the day. So Gaia GPS is a great resource. So leave me any comments, guys. Like I said, I will leave a free PDF under this with all my gear, packing checklist, everything else you need. You can just sign up for my email list and check it out. So thanks for watching. See you guys next time.